Hi, and welcome to Making Music, brought to you by Guitar Showcase. I'm Gary Weinroth from Guitar Showcase, and here with me today, I have the Martin Guitar Company, represented by Bruce Mariano, our national sales manager, and Joe McNamara, our regional sales manager. There you go. You know, Martin Guitars is America's oldest guitar company, and I think that's the place to start with a little history. If we can go back in time just a little bit, talk about some of the things. Uh, one of the things that we have here, well, two of the things, I have right here a guitar that dates back to the Civil War era. I think we can pick that up just a little after the Civil War era, and it's actually a playable mm -hmm. guitar. We don't have it strung and tuned properly because it is you know, over 100 years old and we want to make sure that it doesn't croak on us. But this guitar was basically from the era when we had Abraham Lincoln was our president. We had a civil war when there were things that were bad in our country like slavery and other issues. This other guitar I have right next to me is, can you hold that Surely. first? There's a good one. Can we get in on the, uh, on this other guy? <coughs> This is another one, and you'll note the shape of this case. They call this the coffin case, Martin. Basically, unfortunately, because of all of the dead people from the Civil War, they, uh, they knew how to build coffins, and when they were asked to build a case to fit this guitar, that was the first thing that came to mind. Okay. Now, the, basically, Frederick Martin started, what, well, he was born in like 1796. 1796, correct. The first one, Christian Frederick Martin. Now, we're in the seventh generation today. Claire Francis was born um, in 2004. And she's the seventh I, generation. Claire Francis. Claire Francis Martin. Martin. A little baby girl. And I think we've got a guitar. Do we not have a guitar that yes, is, uh, commemorates our, our little one? I think we had one here somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure where it is right now. We have so many Martin guitars on stage. But, you know, we, we've gone on and on and on. The actually first Martin guitars were, were built commercially in 1833. Correct. That's 173 years of history for Martin. First, the first ones here in the United States were built in New York City. New um, York City. In 1833. In 1833. Correct. And that was just what they built, 10 or 12 a year, something like that? Yeah. Um, quite frankly, he, he did more repair than he did building in those, er really? in those early days until he was able to establish a, a manufacturing facility. That's amazing. A building facility. Now, in 1839, they moved to Nazareth, Pennsylvania? Correct. Uh, that, uh, that building still stands. It's um, probably less than a half a mile from our, our current facility. Really? Do we, we have a shot of it, I We believe. have a shot of that building somewhere in there? Uh, and I believe, yeah, this is what it looks like back in the old days. And... Uh, are we still in Nazareth, Pennsylvania? We're still in Nazareth, in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. In that not in, No, not in that facility. But, but close to it? But very, very close by to and that. And what's correct. the new one look like? Have we got a shot of that? Do we have a uh, brand new building that, didn't you kind of have start a museum and make things? This what we're looking at here is- a little bit like the old one. This is, um, this is a, a new addition to the facility, about 18,000 square feet. It's um, visitor center. Um, the brick portion that you see on the, on the left-hand side of the screen is a facsimile of the old, the old factory, the old, the old building. Very cool, with all the windows, because we didn't have lights in those days. And, and in that is the, is the museum, our new museum. And people can actually go and take factory oh, tours. Oh, absolutely. There's a, there's a factory tour held every day that we're open, and it's usually Monday through Friday. And I'll bet they have a lot of people going through. Last year we had about 25,000 people come through. That's um, amazing. We're expecting between 40 and 50,000 this year. It is amazing. You know, they, they call Martin America's guitar, and, and it truly is. Now, going down, I've, I mean, we've, we've got a great timeline, and if anybody's interested, this is available on the Martin website. Um, in 1840, C.F. Martin Sr., he created and perfected the X bracing. Okay, Joe, you have some examples, I think. Yeah. Uh, of that. Now, tell, tell people, first of all, what is bracing with, with regard to making a guitar? Well, bracing is the, the fine line that you walk uh, to keep, you want to build a guitar that will stay together for 150 or 170 years, um, but you want it to be responsive. This X brace that our founder, CF the first, invented has now been adopted by every single steel string guitar manufacturer in the world. There, you 
walk in and see a steel string guitar, it's using some variation of this traditional Martin brace pattern. And we have used it throughout the years. We've modified it, we've changed it, we've moved positions, but it has always been the basis of uh, what holds a Martin guitar together. You have to remember that there's about 180 pounds of pressure that is trying to make the bridge, which is this part here, kiss the nut. Uh, the guitar wants to fold up on itself. Um, it is also torquing from side to side. Uh, 180 pounds of pressure is an awful lot. Um, uh, if you properly brace a top, you'll get something that sounds wonderful like this. Um, and that will last for four, five, six generations. We build a limited lifetime warranty on every guitar that we make. Uh, it's not uncommon to go back to the Martin factory and see our repair department working guitars 40, 50, 60 years old at no charge to the original owner. Or, or older. I, I guess this guy's not alive still that had this one. But. Right. <laughs> so, so basically, so, so the lifetime guarantee, I mean, this is truly a company that's been around for 173 years. When you've been around for six generations and looking at the seventh, a uh, lifetime guarantee means something more than a company, say, that's been around 20, 25, 30 years. Right, um, right. And that's, that's important. I know at Guitar Showcase, uh, we've been around since 1965 and selling Martins since then. And, you know, it's been just not an issue. It hasn't been a problem at all. Well, that's, I mean, I've got a million things here to talk about history-wise, but I'm just trying to hit on some of the highlights. I know in, in 1917, Martin built its first steel string Hawaiian guitars that are played with a steel bar. I don't have one of those here right now, but basically look very similar to, to the normal guitar, parlor mm -hmm. guitar, mm -hmm. but was, had a higher action and it's what we call a slide guitar right. today. And that was real popular. And then uh, in 1922, the first steel string guitars. Right, a 217, a size two, which is Pretty right here, this. which this was, a big guitar in 1917. Um, they were smaller then. Right. Um, well, people were smaller. Yeah, know. that's uh, true. That's true. Um, uh, 217 uh, with Martins, the number tells you the size of the guitar, whether it's two, five, zero, double zero, triple zero, or a letter, D, J, F, and then the second number tells you the level of trim. The higher the number, the fancier the guitar uh, from from uh, 15 up through 45 and into 50 now. Okay, and, and when, when did the dreadnoughts come about, Bruce? They were around the 30s? The first dreadnought, um, the Ditson, was 1916? Correct. 1916, oh, really? that, correct. The, the size of the dreadnought guitar? Uh, it, was, it had more of a sloped shoulder to it, but it was, mm -hmm. it was a, um, so a that big body ago. guitar. Yeah. Um, and they, they talked about that size, kind of try to keep up with other instruments during the big band era, a little later, but that I, mean, I didn't know it happened that far back. That in venue, mm -hmm. um, as the venues got bigger, the parlor guitars couldn't proje project as, so as, as much. This, so this guitar will, will project, strum that for us, Joe. So you can hear this one in the back of the barn. Yeah. Yes, sir, it will. Okay, and then in 1933, the uh, C.F. Martin III was born, and that was the year they created the D45 for Gene Autry, which is a big D-series guitar, a lot, very similar to that. Right. With a little fancier um, inlay on it and, and that sort of thing. And then, you know, I, I gotta say, all of the country music stars, I mean, including Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, I mean, all of, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Willie even though he played a nylon string, Martin, right. Merle, still does. Merle Haggard, Merle Haggard. Everybody. I mean, an, anybody. The singing cowboy, basically, which is near and dear to me, uh, certainly did play, you know, the, uh, the Martin Dreadnoughts. Ernest Tubb, Lester Flatt, you know, Hank Snow, all of those guys, huh? And, Absolutely. And, and, you know, stepping back in time a little bit, I don't know if you, I saw it on your website, Mark Twain actually played a, Absolutely, uh, a, uh, a Martin, a, a Rosewood that, Martin, you know. That guitar lives in Northern California. Did it? Yes. Okay, um, so what he played on, well, he piloted a riverboat or was that in his writing days? It, uh, I, what I mean to say is it belongs to a collector here uh -huh. in Northern California, lives uh, down in Santa Cruz. I've Excellent. seen the guitar 
It is a size two as well. Rosewood um, like this? Right. Mm -hmm. um, Brazilian rosewood, which uh, unfortunately has become an endangered species, uh, very heavily regulated and controlled. Um, back then it was just rosewood. Uh, we'd never run out and yeah. uh, now it is uh, something that is difficult to find in the quality that we are uh, we like to use and uh, there is a quite a bit of international uh, regulation in the use of it, shipping of it. So we have been on the search for alternatives to the disappearing tropical hardwoods. Um, we started this series of instruments called the Sustainable Wood Series, where we use Native American uh, Pennsylvania cherry um, spruce that was going to be turned into pulp. We bought back from a pulp mill, um, used certified Cataloche fingerboard and bridge. That's a, a hardwood that comes from Mexico and Central America. So. Uh, Martin has always uh, kind of led the way in guitar design. Now we're leading the way in responsible guitar building. That's interesting. That's, that's really interesting. This is a, a, a good segue. Um, we have been experiencing a tremendous amount of, of pressure on um, resources that have been traditionally used in, in musical instrument manufacture. Uh, Joe mentioned Brazilian rosewood. Uh, mahogany itself, uh, the mahogany that we've used for not only the bodies but also for the necks on our guitars is, is just probably a heartbeat away from being placed on the same endangered species list as, really? as Brazilian rosewood. Hmm. Um, so we've been exploring other avenues, other materials, um, you know, the cherry that we're, we're uh, currently using, uh, Madagascar rosewood um, that is has a, a very similar color and a very similar texture as, as Brazilian rosewood. It's beautiful. It looks um, a lot like Brazilian it's rosewood. It's very spectacular. It. But it is actually a rosewood. It's yes, actually it a rosewood. rosewood. And as a tone wood, sounds good. Big, warm, distinct sound. Uh, this particular guitar is a uh, custom signature model built for Lawrence Juber, who is one of the finest guitar players walking the planet today. Uh, this is Adirondack Spruce mm -hmm. and Madagascar Rosewood. Uh, this still has a mahogany neck, but we're experimenting with uh, materials like Spanish cedar, which is actually what we use for the first hundred plus years that we were right. making guitars. This guitar that you have there, mm -hmm. that's a Spanish cedar neck. This neck uh, is actually Spanish cedar. Right, and we are now reintroducing that because it is more available to us uh, and it is less... Uh, has less of an impact ecologically than uh, the mahogany that we are Amazing. finding more and more difficult to find. Now that Lawrence Juber model, this is the same Lawrence Juber I have coming to Guitar Showcase for a clinic in June. It's, yes it is. Yeah. He'll be playing that instrument. He'll, he'll play it and yep. put on a show. Excellent. I hope uh, everybody out there will come down and see him. Uh, it's a free show. They at, should come. It is. <laughs> he is an astounding player. Um, at no time do his fingers leave his hands, so you would swear that, <laughs> that there's a third or fourth hand in there somewhere. <laughs> something. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Okay, well then in the 50s, we had all the, the folk music. You know, I mean, we had the, you know, the Kingston Trio, the Peter, Paul, and Mary, Woody, Guthrie, Elvis, you know, all the people that were doing all of the, you know, the folk music, and, and uh, Martin was right in the middle of that. That was a, a huge, huge boom for the Martin Guitar Company. Um, it was probably the precursor for moving from that old facility uh, where, you know, where we were building guitars on, on uh, North Street to a new facility. Um, we principally doubled our space and doubled our, our uh, building process. Mm -hmm. um, we were building more D28s and more D18s. Um, and the, the folk boom was a tremendous, tremendous um, stimulus for us. Uh, the day that we opened that factory, we had Judy Collins and, and Tom Paxton perform on the loading dock for, for all of the employees and anyone from Nazareth that was interested in coming to see the, the, the concert. The group, huh? 
Well, when guys like Elvis were playing a D-28, I think he did all his son recordings on a D-28. D-18 and a D-28. Okay, right. yeah. And, and uh, those guitars now are basically untouched today. We still have the same. I mean, I'm selling the D-28 at Showcase. The, the basic same guitar, except it's uh, Indian, Indian rosewood, rosewood correct, instead, instead of Brazilian. Brazilian rosewood. In 1968, we switched from uh, Brazilian rosewood to Indian rosewood due to um, supply problems from Brazil. Um, in 1992, an international treaty was signed called the CITES Treaty um, that regulates uh, endangered species. There are three appendixes uh, for the CITES Treaty. Appendix one is or materials that are absolutely endangered and either regulated uh, to the point where there is no trade in them or regulated to the point where, like Brazilian rosewood, there is a long paperwork trail that that uh, we as a manufacturer can prove to you as a uh, guitar buyer that the, the instrument that you're buying, the wood was harvested prior to 1992. Uh, Martin believes very strongly in following these guidelines. Unfortunately, the guitar business doesn't quite live up to the example that some of the more responsible builders set. set. Um, Schedule two, appendix two of the CITES treaty are materials that the CITES governing board either believes will soon be endangered or a particular country has asked the rest of the world to stop using that material. Right. Uh, the South American mahogany that has been the other wood in guitar building was put on the CITES schedule two in 2003, I believe. So. That's when we've started so that's, exploring that's the alternative scarce. materials. Well, you know, the, one of the things that's you know n near and dear to my heart. In '79, you guys opened your custom shop. Right. Okay, Bruce, tell us about the custom shop because that's, you know, I'm, I'm a guitaraholic and I absolutely love some of the beautiful things that come out of the custom shop. The the custom shop is principally either consumer driven or dealer driven, whereby the consumer wants to take a body style that we currently, we currently have in our mix and they want to build a personalized instrument. Mm -hmm. um, they may want to use a different species of wood or they may, may want to do some upgrades on, on the instrument and they have an opportunity to design that through dealers like you right. and we'll, we'll build it, um, get it to you and you deliver it. You deliver it to, mm -hmm. to your your customer. And oh. we we do that a lot, <laughs> actually. And and you know a lot of that is creating a family heirloom. You know these these guitars. I mean, obviously they're going to be around for a hundred and whatever years. And uh, I think we've got a oh, right here. I have an example. This is one that we created at Guitar Showcase. This, in fact, this is another wood that I really enjoy, and it's. Uh, Koa. This is Hawaiian mahogany in essence, isn't it? And this right. Is, this uh, is actually plain an, Koa. It's an acacia. Um, it's obviously a beautiful wood. It sounds great, and it is being responsibly farmed in Hawaii. So it is so not it's renewable. Some, it's it's a resource that we expect to be around for a while. Gary and I share similar tastes. This guitar is my own personal latest uh, custom. I also chose Koa. I took a standard model that we use uh, called the 0018V, had it built in Koa, which Martin did a lot of in the 20s and 30s. And if you guys can get in tight on this headstock, that's the McNamara family crest uh, that I had uh, one of our inlay artists um, inlay in different uh, materials of shell and pearl. I like to say uh, with the custom shop, no matter how awful your taste, we will faithfully execute your designs. Um, we'll pretty much do anything you can dream up. Uh, we won't cut a brace for anybody, but uh, we won't compromise the integrity of the instrument. We want it to last 100 or 150 years, but we encourage uh, you folks out there to come into uh, our better shops like Guitar Showcase who really make an effort. Um, they work closely with with myself and with folks like Bruce back at the plant. I'm local to the Bay Area. And um, we can put together a quote um, while you're standing there, uh, 
print it out and hand it to you. You can take it home and Absolutely. decide. Absolutely. So you know what the cost is before right. you even get involved. I'd, I'd like, like to just make a comment sure. on, what, on what Joe was, was talking about earlier, and that's um, responsibly ma manage forestry. Um, I'm not sure that the, the general populace, the general public realizes that um, the wood that we use in, in building fine instruments takes centuries to grow. Uh, the koa, the rosewood, the mahogany, uh, 400, 500 years. Really? The, the, the spruce that we use, Sitka spruce, could be 600 to 700 years old. Um, and managing that is, is, a, is a real feat, a real task. And uh, I, quite frankly, am, am impressed with the, with the Indian government, the way they manage their, their rosewood, their East Indian rosewood. Uh, they don't go in and clear cut. They, you know, they they harvest they harvest felled trees or trees that have been struck by mm -hmm. lightning, um, and harvest it, and um, process it, and then supply it to us to musical instrument man instrument manufacturers. Right. Not in the bulk form, not in the tree form, but they process it. They supply it to us in backs and sides and fingerboards. Oh, really? It, it, in, yes. in the actual Correct. pieces? Like, for instance, uh, Joe, you've got some necks here, too. Right. Um, this, uh, this starts out as a billet of mahogany, um, roughly 12 quarter. Um, 12 quarter and 10 quarter. Right. Um, to make a piece, uh, to make a one piece mahogany neck, like this, there is an awful lot of waste. So we are looking at alternatives to, to imagine, if you would, that this was a long uh, rectangle cube of mahogany, and you basically cut off and threw away everything that didn't look like a neck. So um, in the old days, we used a two-piece neck, which uh, allowed one, yeah. us mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, stretch the supply of uh, fine. Music in, musical instrument quality woods, and uh, we're looking at that again today. Uh, in a similar fashion with a- Correct. A joint of some sort that, that'll that hold it and, and look aesthetically pleasing? Yes. Okay, uh, because that's important. <clears throat> Aesthetics, as, as you can see with these guitars, you know, are, are, are very, very important. I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's everything. It's part well, of it. This is playable art. I mean, basically, exactly. these guitars hang on the wall and this is, this is basically playable art, and we want to make sure that it stays that way. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's jump ahead a little bit. We, we're getting short on time here. 1986, uh, Chris Martin IV took over our, our current leader, okay? And he's, uh, he's, he's been to our store for seminars, and we'll have him again for a clinic. And, uh, and he's the guy that we've been dealing with ever since and, and doing a great job and responsibly managing all of these resources and instruments, because you guys got to age this wood too. I mean, you don't just take green planks and you know you have to the, buy pieces. You're, that you're right. You're right. It, we we bring it into our facility, and um, before before we even touch the wood in in the form of processing it into usable parts, um, it just sits in our sawmill area and ambient dries until um, until we we find the right combination of moisture sure. in it absolutely um, absolutely we have rooms we, that we have rooms that hydrate we have rooms that dry um, once we get it into a into usable part form it goes into an acclimating room and could sit in that acclimating room for up to a year mm -hmm. uh, or longer um, to get itself into the right temperature and right humidity, humidity. it's all important now, do we have? Did we bring a baby Martin along? I thought we did. Um, not sure where it is. Is there a little tiny guitar? little guy somewhere, maybe, maybe the off room? the set? We had a little yeah. baby Martin, actually, and that that brings us to the to the most sustainable of woods. It's a high pressure composite laminate. Basically, you take all of your scraps, you grind them all up, throw them in with a little resin or something, and the, it was in a gig bag in the other room, I think, in the green room. But um, yeah, the the material itself is is. Uh, particles of wood and paper um, uh -huh. with an, a resin interjected, and it's placed under a tremendous amount of, of, of pressure. 
and wow. that and that works. And I mean, we're we're to a point where that that does a good job. The other the other thing that we have is Martin is now making again. I might add an electric guitar. I don't know if we can see it. It's this blonde colored one right back here. If I move this guy over a little bit. This is a joint venture with a pretty well respected archtop builder named Dale Unger who builds under the name of American Archtop and it's the first time in 173 years that Martin has put someone else's logo on their guitar. If we can get a tight shot of that very last guitar on the headstock you'll see the Martin logo this guy and you'll see the American Archtop logo. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we build these in Nazareth uh, from Dale Unger's design, and uh, it's something that uh, has taken off pretty well in the Bay Area. In fact, Guitar Showcase is my leading jazz guitar outlet. Uh, they've got a wonderful professional crew of, of guys who aren't waiting to become rock stars or uh, are going to be something else. These guys are professional music store uh, workers that uh, most of them can play circles around uh, just about anybody that walks in there but they treat everybody with respect uh, it's a relationship that works great for both of us I'm really pleased that uh, Gary has had, had us here today well thank you Joe you know and, and Bruce and we're about out of time we're gonna have to wrap it up and uh, thank you very much for joining us today thank you for coming to Making Music we look forward to having actually Lawrence Juber hopefully we'll tape a little of his clinic We'll do that again. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time.